Jake, Jake, Jake. Oh, tingin sa ating director. May bago tayong director. Hello, Tom. Okay na? Uh, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters, sister in Christ. Uh, welcome to, in our Sunday service here in Germany, Weiler's Feast. Uh, praise and thank God sa magandang weather na to. Oh, yes. Nandito pa rin tayo at na... na Nagpupuri sa Panginoon at nagpapasalamat sa lahat. Amen. Our opening prayer is Sister Eva. Well, this is yet dying. Yeah. <coughs> uh, magandang hapo sa iyo, Panginoon, sa inyong mga kapatid at sa lahat ng nanonood. Mike says. All the globe. And all... Uh, salamat po sa Panginoon na nandito kami sa araw na ito. Oh Lord, we come to you with gladness in our heart. May this afternoon praise you, we praise you with all the gladness and happiness and joy to thank you for all the goodness and all the trials that we meet in our lives. Thank you, Father, for always guiding us. And... Uh, all my brothers and sisters, that we may praise you with all the gladness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Before we start praising the Lord, I, I want to read uh, three psalms. Because God was leading me to those passages in the Bible. And I want us to understand, so. Mm -hmm. Psalms 59, verse 17, it says, Oh, my strength. So he's calling God my strength. Oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you, for you, O oh God, are my fortress. Amen. The God who shows me steadfast love. God is indeed our fortress. He's our protector. In Him we are secured. Amen? Amen. We should know this. Psalms 56 verse 4. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust. Mm -hmm. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Amen? Amen. Can we relate? Amen. Amen. <laughs> but we have to know. God is our fortress, amen, our strength. Psalms 21, verse 13, it says, Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. Hallelujah. We will sing and praise your power. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We raise a hallelujah amen. because he is powerful, amen? amen. And he wants us to raise this in faith, mm. in faith to him, what amen. he amen. will do and what he can do, amen? <laughs> hallelujah. So let's stand up. Let's focus on the Lord who deserves all praise and glory. Yes, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. You are good. Sing with me. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive I raise a hallelujah With everything inside of me a hallelujah I will watch the 
darkness flee Yes, we're victory I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery Rock from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Yes, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you gotta hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive sing a little louder sing a little louder yes come on sing a little louder 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 in the presence of Sing a little louder, louder than the underly. Sing a little louder, heaven is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder, I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. defeated the king is alive i'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope is arise death is defeated the king is our strength you are our victory yes lord that's why we can decide and stay, stand here and say i will amen. bring praise whatever happens amen. around amen. us amen. amen i will bring praise all of my life i have the reason to worship hallelujah you are the reason amen good god This is my prayer in the desert And all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides And this is my prayer in the fire in weakness or trial or pain There is a faith proof no more than gold So we find me, Lord, through the flame I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice, I will declare my victory and he is here. Yes, you are here. This is my prayer in the battle when triumph is still on its way. I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ, so firm on the 
His promise I'll stand And I will bring praise I will bring praise I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice I will declare God is my victory And He is seen All of my life All of my life In every season You are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship All of my life All of my life In every season still God, I have a reason to sing, I have a reason to worship, yes Lord we worship you, all of my life, in every season, you are still God, I have a reason to sing, I have a reason to worship. formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and He is seen. Yes, He's my victory and He is seen. This is my prayer in the harvest, when favor and providence flow. us with your seed, with your incorruptible seed, with your love and grace. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that you're always the same yesterday, today, and forever, that you will make ways yes. where there seem to be no way, that you do the miracle. You are the one. You work in ways we cannot see, but you're doing it for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want to give you the glory. We want to honor you because we know how good you are. Hallelujah. We know that you are here and we thank you, Lord, for your presence, Hallelujah. for your guidance, for your leading. Lord.
worship you. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop working. Never stop, you'll never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You'll never stop, you never stop, never stop working. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here alone, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are. Way make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Promise maker, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Promises of God. That's who you are, and that's how you are, how good you are. Yes, we sang, you are the light in the darkness. Yes, you are the way and the life and the light. Hallelujah. And you came down, became poor, that we have also this life and this light in us. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. Worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrificial love. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me. Me. 
Jesus, you are King of Kings. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. And humbly you came to the earth, you created, all for love's sake became. sacrificial love for your love toward us that we can walk secured in you Lord that nothing will happen or harm us in Jesus name I thank you Lord that you pick us up out of the darkness into your light Hallelujah. that you are an enabler you are so good. and you are equipping us with everything we need yes oh Lord you are good all the peace and joy we have we thank you Lord and with thankful hearts we give you glory help us oh Lord how we live our lives outside in the world help us to be the light of the world as you said we are the light of the world we thank you Lord for the light and your word that's the lamp unto our feet that's guiding us each day step by step through your Holy Spirit and your word yes we honor you you deserve all glory you deserve the glory
hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you. for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, that we can uh, get rid of all the problems, of all the heavy load. Thank you, Lord, that you are there and that you are always with us. Never leave us, nor forsake us. What a promise. And what a relief we can run to the Father. And we know he's a forgiving Father. Yes, Lord. We know that he's molding us. Soften our hearts that we listen to your small voice each and every day. Make us a blessing to others. Because, Lord, we are blessed. We are loved, accepted, and we know that full well. We are blessed, and we give glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes. Let's say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Through Jesus and for Jesus. Amen. Yes, everything is created. And he is good. He has good plans for each and every one. And I'm excited for the message today. Amen. 
because God wants always that we are improving on our journey. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we continue for our praise and worship by continue uh, by giving our praise and testimony to the Lord. So nandito na ako na mauna. <laughs> first first testimony is that uh, yeah, praise God and thank God that we are always healthy for giving us uh, strength always for blessing us oh god thank you you are our way maker miracle worker and a promise keeper in second corinthians 20 verse uh, 15 god says do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast of army, for the battles is not yours but God's. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. More testimony. Ako gusto ko lang ang testimony ko ay gusto ko lang magpasalamat sa Panginoong Diyos dahil hindi siya ang, pang, ang Panginoon natin na hindi nag nag-umihinto, nagabayan tayo. Nandyan siya palagi, palagi na naka, naka tingin sa atin. Nakatingin siya kahit na hindi mo kwanit, alam niya lahat ang nangyayari sa atin. Kaya hindi ako magsasawa talaga na mag manalangin sa kanya, mag uh, mag sa kanya ibigay ko ang lahat-lahat ng buhay ko sa kanya lahat-lahat siya lang ang Panginoon ko siya lang ang Panginoon ko kaya Lord sana po wag kayong magsawa na gabayan niyo kaming lahat dito lalong gabayan niyo po ang aming mga ang ating ang aming simbahan na sana marami pa kaming makukuha na manampalataya sa iyo, Lord. Alam ko na nangangailangan lahat ng gabay mo, Lord. Kaya sana, Panginoon, inihikayat ko yung mga kaibigan, mga, mga kamag-anak, mga wana, na, na manalangin tayo sa Panginoon. Dahil siya lang ang ating Panginoon, wala ng iba. Salamat, Panginoon. Yun lang po. Praise the Lord, yes. I want to thank God for each milestone He's bringing me forward to the end of my training. I finished uh, the school blog on Friday, and tomorrow I will start uh, six weeks in another department in oncology, which I am already a little bit... Uh, with respect and not scared but it's God that I trust I mean I, I really have to tell myself God I trust you the six weeks I'm there let me be a blessing guide me there it will not be easy because yeah I know I will cry a lot I know already but that doesn't matter <laughs> God um, 
will sustain me and give me the right um, leading how to be a blessing there, right? Amen. Yeah, you, you, I will see the, the people dying maybe or yeah, whatever. God is with me and I thank God that I, I have not to do that alone out of my strength because then I am I'm done. I just need to see them crying and I will I will walk away. But no, God use me there and make me a blessing to those people that I may also pray for them for their healing and that I'm not afraid. In Jesus name, this is a prayer. Actually, I want to <laughs> to praise the Lord, but I need the Lord in in the next six weeks more than nah. Kann man auch nicht sagen. I really need him. God is good and he's there. Praise the Lord. Oh, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Nakmal. Gusto ko lang magpasalamat sa Diyos. Amen. Sa kasiyahan ng aking anak. Lord, you promise. What verse is that? I will make your your children's. What kind of verse? Uh, Lord, nakikita ko ginagawa mo ito. Nakikita ko ang aking anak to be a good mom, a good wife, and a good daughter. Uh, doon pa lang, Panginoon. Actually, ayaw ko mag-stand dito, but gusto ko itong patunayan sa harap ng mga kapatiran na how blessed I am. Totoong tunay na ang Diyos, kahit anong bagay ang hindi ko kain, ang Diyos ang magbibigay sa inyo ng kasiyahan, ng joy, fulfillment, your emptiness may be gone Amen. and with this joy nakikita ko yung aking anak oh she live her life oh lord when she's small girl people saying what will this little girl do in her life she don't all know she just know how to dance and now My brother and sister, I have a great daughter, a good mom, a good, a good, uh, sweet daughter. I always teach her, you know, girl, be a good, be a good, uh, uh, be a good uh, sweet uh, 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 son, uh, be a good daughter-in-law. Not everybody's perfect. You have to look the good side of her. You know, whose figure daughter, whose mother-in-law will take care of your kids and you go with your husband quick looking kino. Who's that? And for such small things that you don't like to your sweet mom, you have to love it. Not only the good side, not only the bad side, also, not only the good side you have to love with other people, but only the good side the bad side and I see how happy they are living together now because they are building a new house thank father yes Jesus it's a mother fulfillment I thank you for this hindi ko alam kung paano ka ako sasalamat ang Lord nagkakasala ako minsan niya kasi marami akong intoys yung sa buhay vets I stay, uh, I stop uh, close, you know, I was before, you know, but because of the intuition, what do you call that in English? Disappointment, Disappointment in life, you know, uh, uh, better to help someone you don't know. Maybe it's wrong. And... Because you take my life's, you take the good future of my, of my daughter, and you promise that. I want to, 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 to 
give my heart back to you again, to give me my old heart, to be open to someone who in need. Lord, please open it to me and uh, na maibalik ko yung madala akong mag-forgiveness at wag akong ma-entoy sa mga tao. May I find the love, your love in me. So that, so that I can share this love to everybody. Lord, hanggang walang katapusang palala, pasasalamat at sana i-guide mo ang aking kalooban na to do all the good with other people. Wag ko makita yung kasama. Sana makita ko sa tao, lahat ay kabuti ko. I want to serve you. I don't know in what way can I serve you. And I wish one day you give me the wisdom and I want to show my daughter, my grandchildren how to serve you and to follow my way when I'm not in this world anymore. Oh Lord, thank you and, and I wish, I wish na lagi na to have a good heart na makita ko lagi ang kabutihan ng tao kabutihan ng tao at hindi ang kasamaan. Father, I, I'm asking you this. Na sana ay bawat tao hindi ko man kilala at kilala ko pa man. Sana matuto ko lagi silang mahali at makita ko ang kanilang hindi lang kabutihan. Mahalin ko pati ang kanilang kasamaan. And I'm asking you this, O oh Lord, and I thank you for all the blessing and all the pains that you. And it's not only the drama, na. And all the pains na experience ko, you make me strong, O oh Lord. Yes, gusto ko like share sa inyo na. Napakabuti ng Diyos. Ibinangon niya ang aking paa stronger than before. I was knocked down. And now I'm here again praising your name. And all the things I can say is thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Um, I thank God uh, for adding me another year of my life. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Um, yes, thank you, Lord, uh, sa lahat ng blessings, trials na pinagkaloob niya, na napapagtagumpayan namin sa tulong din niya. I praise God na um, uh, I, I pray uh, to God na uh, God will continue to to use me, to use us for His glory. Yun lang po. To God be the glory. Ako ay nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon. Um, ituturo naman. May uh, tuturo sa akin ng Panginoon ko ano yung mapipili ko ang trabaho. Uh, Napaka-blessing natin dito sa Germany. Yes. Kasi ilan yung mga interview ko pero parang hindi interview eh. Parang talaga yung encourage kang magtrabaho ka sa kanila. <laughs> so napakalaking uh, blessing sa atin lalo na tayo dito sa Germany. Hindi ka pare sa Pilipinas na dadaan ka talaga sa napaka-hard. Meron pang uh, uh, ano tawag dito? Interview one, final interview. Dito talaga napaka talaga napaka open arm nila na i-choose sila na dito ka magtrabaho sa amin. Ganyan ganyan, wala kang pag-alinlangan. Kaya nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon kasi dito ako napadpad at um, alam kong gagabayan niya ako kung ano yung yung talagang uh, yung calling niya ba sa akin kung saan ako talaga niya i-assign sa mag-alaga na matatanda o maghugas ng plato <laughs> so grateful ako kahit na maghugas ng plato <laughs> pero alam kong uh, may rason kung saan niya ako dadalin so makikita natin kung anong bibigay sa atin ng Panginoon kasi may nararamdaman pag naghanap ka ng trabaho may mararamdaman ka sa iyong puso kung ano talaga yung bibigay ng Panginoon 
So, nakita ko kahap nung Donas Tag yung matatanda na na ang hirap ang hirap talaga, ang hirap. So, naalala mo yung yung mga magulang mo na wala mag-aalaga. Makikita mo yung sitwasyon ng mga matatanda na wala walang mga anak sa tabi. Ang hirap. So, alam ko kung ano ibibigay sa akin ng Panginoon. Nararamdaman ko. Salamat sa iyo, Panginoon, kasi hindi mo ako uh, lahat ng uh, mga uh, biberbong ko nagre-response sila kaagad sa akin. Salamat sa gabay, sa gabay mo, Panginoon. In Jesus' name, Amen. our service by offering on Pauline will make the offering prayer in that Thank you, Lord, for one, for the wonderful day and the life that you give to us. And thank you for every day um, blessing. Um, I pray this for, for offering to you, Lord, it will use to export to your house and will use the right way to I pray. All the people who give this offering continue blessing, open them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, praise God. Thank you so much, Pauline, for that prayer. And Sophie, wow. They're, our kids are our future, so they're already participating. Praise God. Praise God for their lives. <clears throat> Okay, we are in our final Sunday uh, with our topic on fellowship. And next Sunday, we will start a new topic, which is uh, compassion. Those of you who just attended attended this Sunday. We have started since three months ago, was it, I think? Three months ago, uh, where we were talking about our uh, five-fold mission in our fellowship. And we talk about worship, we talk about discipleship, we talk about uh, evangelism, and now we are talking about fellowship. And next Sunday, we will start with compassion. So in the last three Sundays, we talk about fellowship. And we were talking about the doctrinal basis of fellowship, how fellowship was used by our um, by the apostles, how they express this in different ways. And so this Sunday, I would like us to uh, look at further application of this word koinonia, or fellowship. Uh, we want to apply it in our church, right? Uh, there's no point learning all this if we don't use it, if we don't apply it. 
in our church. So today I want us to see how we can st strengthen our fellowship. And sometimes fellowship can be up and down. Hi, Vigo. Uh, up and down. And sometimes people are getting discouraged. But let us look at what the Bible says, how we can enhance our fellowship in this church. And so let us look at various acts of worship that we are doing here uh, publicly or in our uh, gatherings, in our assemblies. These are actually designed to build and improve our fellowship in Christ. One of these is prayer and worship. Okay, and at the start of this uh, whole thing, we talk about worship already. But I would like us to put, uh, I mean, to look at worship as enhancer of our fellowship, the prayer and worship. And so let's examine these two things and by looking at what the scriptures say about it. How, what the, the early church have done or um, what did worship or prayer, prayer and worship uh, do to them. Okay, in Acts 2.42, our main verse for, um, since we started, it says here, they devoted themselves to the apostles, uh, to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. I'm sure that every one of us agree that prayer is necessary that there is power in prayer, that we need prayer. But in the early church, we can see here in, uh, in just a short while, we will be reading some uh, passages. We will see in the early church that they prayed together as a family, as a fellowship. So their prayer bind them together more strongly. And they do this much more when they are persecuted. Okay, when they are, when people are despising them, when they are being uh, threatened, when they are persecuted. And this is a story of Peter and John. Acts 4, 21 to 24, they were imprisoned because of their sharing the good news. You know? Have you been imprisoned because you shared the gospel to others? I'm, uh, I'm sure no one of us has experienced that yet. The worst thing that can happen to us or that has ha might, might have happened to us is or, uh, just, you know, rejection from our friends. Or pagtatawanan tayo ng mga kaibigan or even kapamilya. Pero that we were brought to jail, hindi pa naman, ano? We have never experienced that. But here's John and uh, Paul, uh, Peter. They were put to jail because of that. And so in the midst of this persecution, they are being persecuted. The first Christians, the early church, they were persecuted by the Jews themselves. Yung mga kap kapareho, kalahi nila actually. Yes? But what did they do? They gathered together and prayed. So let's read Acts 4, verse, verses 21 to 24. It says here, After further threats, they led, let them go. So, they threatened, uh, uh, threatened John and Peter na pag kayo ay nag, nag mensahe pa, kayo nag preach pa, if you still preach and tell the good news to others, we will do something bad to you. Okay? 
And it, let's read on. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. Okay, nung nadinig nila na may mga persecution na nangyayari around them, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. And they said, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Verse 31 says, oh, I'm reading 29 and 31 now. Uh, verse 31 says, after they prayed, they, uh, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So, scenario, Peter and John, they went, actually they went to the temple and they healed this cripple, I think. Yeah, and they said to that cripple, stand up. Uh, we don't have gold, we have no silver, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, they said. And this man walked, and then this man was praising God. And all the people were praising God too. And because of this, they are being punished. The <laughs> yung mga Jews, yung mga leaders of the Jews, they, they imprisoned them. Okay, but what did they do? The, I mean, the, the brothers and sisters, the early church, they gathered together, together and prayed. When they heard that they are being persecuted, they prayed much more. That's fellowship. They come together to pray. Believing together that God will do something. They don't just meet to eat. <laughs> of course, it's nice to eat. And that's part of fellowship too. To eat, to have fun together. But that's not the only thing they were doing. They meet together to pray. They meet together to praise the Lord. Yes. I can remember when the pandemic started here in Germany. It's March. Second week of March. I called for a prayer <laughs> here in church. I think that's a Wednesday morning. And so I came. Nobody came. <laughs> Doctor was one. Someone came. I already arranged the, the seats that, of course, distancing, right? <laughs> so the seats should be, in uh, yun lockdown, no, pero we should already have some uh, distancing. So. And so we were praying here together with that sister who came. We were praising God. We were praying, sing, singing songs, praying, singing songs like that. And then the following day I said, okay, come on, let's <laughs> go. Nobody came anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and that's not the fight to persecution. Huh? It was just a lockdown. It was just an epidemic. You know, what about if we are already persecuted? Yes, but you see, in the, in the early church, they were gathering together. They were so eager to really meet together and pray. That's fellowship. So it is my desire and it's my hope that we will really have that desire to come together not just for fun not just for for having good times but to really pray together amen and then in um, verse and in Acts 12 another example we see here um, it was about this time, uh, Acts 12, 1 to 12. I'll just read it. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. Grave, no? They just get someone and then kill them. You know, a believer, they kill them. And then he said, here, it says here, 
When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to see Peter also. Nakita niya, he saw, uh, Herod saw that this amused or this was natuwa um, yung mga Jews. Then, he also captured Peter, you know, just to please this Jew. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to the to, uh, to be guarded by our four squads of young of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God. Ito na naman ang church. Peter was arrested because nakita ni Herod na ah natutuwa ang mga Jews pag pinata nung pinatay niya si James. Ito ang kasunod si Peter. Yeah. The church, the members of the church, they gathered together to pray. Okay. Um So Peter was kept in prison but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And of course, we know what happened. Uh, I hope you know. <laughs> you know the story that there was uh, an, uh, an angel came to him at night. He appeared to him and he woke him up. It seems that Peter was not bothered. Wala. Wala sa kanya. He was still peaceful kahit inaresto siya. You know. But uh, he has peace because he knows that he's doing uh, right for, with God. And the angel woke him up. Sabi niya, halika na. And then the, his chains were broken. It fell down. And Peter just rose up and then went with the angel. The doors were opening before them. Even the gates. Wow. wow. What is that? You know. Come to think of it. Peter is in jail. The believers are gathered in one place. They were praying. And now the angel came to Peter while they were praying. They were still praying and the answer is already there. Do you see that? But why is it? Because they have this desire to really fellowship together in that, in praying, in the midst of persecution. Amen? The angel of the Lord brought Peter out of prison. So their prayers were answered immediately. Okay? So the early church really meet together to fellowship in prayer. That's one activity that they did to fellowship. Prayer. Um, imagine, they were alone. The... the, the, the Members were gathering together on their own. Walang, walang, walang leader at the time. Kasi si Peter nasa prison. On their initiative, they gathered. So, and then they prayed. And the Lord answered their prayer. And they witnessed a supernatural thing. Miracle. At that very moment. Hallelujah. Now, do you believe God answers prayers? Yes, I think we have seen a lot of answered prayers already. I'm sure you have also experienced them privately and also as a church. Yes, so I, I really encourage each one of you to attend. We, we have a midweek uh, prayer meeting online, so you don't even need to travel anymore. You know, online, you just click your computer or your cell phone, open it, go to Zoom, and that's it. You will have fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And it's beautiful. In the last two weeks, I'm so happy that there are already more coming in. More coming in. And it's so beautiful to see us there meeting together, sharing with each other, praising the Lord, and then praying for needs. Amen. Kung may mga needs, speak it out. Huwag niyong kimkimin yung mga needs. Share it to your brothers and sisters. Share it in our um, chat group, group chat. 
so that our brethren can pray for it. Mahirap magisa. Yes. Oh, one one thing. Oh, remember yung, yung remember the the testimony of Nanai. On that meeting she attended, she was requesting that there would be uh, you know that we pray for the reconciliation of, of with the family. You know, and we prayed for it. That same week was the answer, right? Two days. Imagine that. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is answering our prayers. And then last week, someone was praying that I will get a car. <laughs> that God will provide my car. Kasi binangga ko yung car ko. Ewan ko ba? Ayan. And, yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> we went looking for a car this week. And we finally found one. Hallelujah. God is answering prayer. God is providing. Now, we have a God who is, you know, a great God, the owner of the universe, remember? Creator of the universe. He is a rich God, and He is a loving Father. Na kahit tayo may pagkakamali, eh, welcome pa rin tayo sa Kanya. Kaya nga dapat, we are running to Him in prayer all the time. Amen. So, yes, I encourage you Wednesday. <laughs> please attend our prayer meeting. I mean, of course, uh, not by force, but I, I, I hope not. Uh, you don't do this uh, by obligation, but really as a desire to to be with your brothers and sisters, to pray together, to agree together. There is power in agreement in prayer. Of course, it's possible that you can pray alone to God. God also hears that. But there is power when we come together and we agree together. Amen? So the early church, they prayed together. And also they worship together. There's another story. Paul and Silas. You've heard the name, right? Apostle Paul at saka si Silas. Na prison rin sila. They were also in prison. <laughs> Talaga, before they were really, really persecuted yung mga early Christians. And you know, we are so blessed that we have freedom. I mean, even right now, there are Christians who are persecuted. I think in China, they are not that free. In... Um, now, this, uh, this regions, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, uh, uh, where else? But uh, these this regions in, in, the, in Asia, they are not uh, free like we are. They cannot just gather like this and praise the Lord. Uh, even in Southeast Asia, um, countries like Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Laos, these countries, they are not free to praise the Lord. So everything they do, they do it in hiding. Yeah, so we are really happy we are free to do that. So here, the Paul and Silas, they were imprisoned. Okay? But while they were in prison, in prison, they were praising God. Dalawa sila. Dalawa lang sila, they made a fellowship doon sa prisohan. Imagine, ikaw ang napriso. What will you do? Will you be singing there inside? Or you will just go to, kahit siguro may kasama ka, you will not be, you know, you will not do that. I could imagine myself going to one corner and start crying or praise or, or, or praying to God, but in, in, you know, in silence and in, you know, Lord, how can I get out of here? Or maybe I will be planning something to get out of here. But Paul and Silas, they were there in chains and they were singing. Sabi dito in 25, verse 25, chapter 16. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God in the midst of prison, inside the prison. And the people, the other prisoners, were listening to them. Okay, here we can see the connection of prayer and worship. Okay, so they are kind of interconnected. So, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of trial, they still come together 
to worship the Lord. Amen? Let us not allow our circumstances na ay, well, hindi ko feel yata pumunta sa church. Ano? Instead, e, uh, despite that, despite some, uh, you know, trials and tribulations we are experiencing, the more that we want to come to meet with our brothers and sisters and worship Him. Amen? There is power also in worship. How, how, so, if we just kind of put, up, put them together, how does uh, prayer, or how prayer and worship improves fellowship? Well, there are benefits of prayer. And I just want to, um, to um, yes, share it to you. First of all, it is a, a source of strength, okay, and peace. Have you um, experienced that while you have trouble or, or going through trials and you start praying afterwards na, na ano bang term doon sa Tagalog? Na uuna, na usawan. <laughs> you are, you, you get, you, you receive peace. You will have peace after you pray. After praising God, after praying, you get peace. And also you get strength. Yes, I remember when I was uh, starting in the um, in the hospital, my first year. Every time I go to the hospital, I'm <laughs> I am trembling, you know, <laughs> because I don't know how to speak German. I don't know what to do, you know, all these things. And then the doctors would do this and that to you, and so every time I go in, I start praying. After my prayer, I I feel you know better. I get the strength from the Lord to go on. So it's like that. They, uh, when we pray together, we, when we worship together, it will give us strength. It will give us peace. In Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and a petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, wag daw tayong mabahala. Do not be anxious of anything. Instead, let us present to God our petition in prayer. And then what happens when we do that? He will guard our hearts. So instead of having fear, instead of having doubts, let's say ang pinapipray natin is bitterness, then, you know, if we have bitterness or anger to someone, and then we start praying to God, Lord, remove this from me. God will guard our hearts and will give us peace. It says, and your minds, uh, will guard your heights, hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that's in the level of personal, I mean, personal level. When we do that to the Lord, then we will have peace and strength. But there is also a special value when Christians pray together. Jesus said in Matthew verse, uh, chapter 18, verses 19 to 20, He said, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree remember sabi ko kanina there is power in agreement Jesus himself was telling this if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them by my father hallelujah do you believe that for two or three gather in my name there am I with them So, if two of us, at least two, will come together and pray together, it's already, something is already going on in heaven. I mean, there's already power being released. Answer is already being released. Amen. I so, because he said, two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them. So, when we do that, when we meet together, kahit dalawa lang, we, be, we must believe that God is with us. God is in our 
means at that moment. And so he is listening to our prayers. And what does it say? It will be done in, uh, by my Father in heaven. Amen. So Jesus himself taught this. Okay? And James also, he also taught the value of prayer. He said in James 5 verse 16, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Pray for each other. That's fellowship. Hindi tayo nag Hindi we, we, we don't want to isolate ourselves. Na nag lang tayo. And let us not be uh, yung matakot ba? Or be shy to share our burdens, to shy our need, uh, to to share our needs, because it's the it's the only way that we can know each other and then that we can pray for each other. E kung lang, kung wala akong na ni, then how could I pray? You know, what shall what shall I pray? Of course, I can pray. Lord bless Kathy, bless Sister Arlen, bless Sister. I can only do that very general prayer. But when I know, when each one of us know each other and know the uh, need, then we can pray specifically for that need. Amen? And that's what we are doing in our midweek prayer meeting. Amen? So, I encourage you to share your, your prayer requests. Just write it in, those, uh, in that box, in that uh, uh, prayer room. And another um, benefit of worship, or the, the, the first ones we talk about the benefits of prayer, but now we talk about the benefit of uh, worship. When we worship together, what can we get? Okay, what if I worship alone at home? Will there be benefit for me? Will there be benefit that I get? Well, James 5.13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. So, if I am happy, if I'm alone, if I am uh, joyful, then I can pray or I can also praise the Lord. It's okay. I, can also, I will have also benefit. Yes? But, just think about it. If one or two gather together and they start praying and, and praising the Lord, wow, what kind of benefit is that? What power is that? Yes, there is power in togetherness. In Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through hymns, through songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So, hindi lang pala prayer, kundi pati pagkanta, pag praise the Lord. Okay, sanayin na natin ang mga sarili natin to that when we meet together, come on, let's, let's see, sing. Halika sis, kumanta tayo ng papuri sa Panginoon. Halika, let's pray for her. Okay, I, I, I have a need sis. Ah, yeah, sige, let's pray for it. Pero bago tayo mag-pray, let's praise the Lord first. Let's worship the Lord. Okay, this is the long song. You know, sabi dito, uh, through psalms, through hymns, through songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Bakit tayo nagsising? We will sing with gratitude because we are thankful daw sa Panginoon. Amen? So, I, I hope that we are, we will be practicing all this. Na hindi lang natin narinig ngayon and then bukas wala na. You know? So, let me see if in the next few days, kunyari nagtawagan kayo and then and then what will you do <laughs> when you call each other for example when you chat to each other what are you chatting about kaya nga do, if we do this if we do share our burden and pray for our burden and then we pray uh, we praise the lord in it wala nang mga chismisan right Kasi we are talking about our burden. We are talking about how to pray for it. We are not talking about, ay, ganito, ganyan, ay, si ganito, ganyan, ay, si ganyan, ganyan. So, there will be no, uh, no, walang marites. No, it's not nice. It's not nice. And, you know, doing that, we are just wasting time. 
and we are hurting ourselves too. Okay, so instead, when we meet together, let's talk about our problems, yes, our own problems, huh? not the problem of others. <laughs> but if you talk about the problems of others, then pray for the problems of others. Don't talk about it para lang masira yung kapatid. Kundi, you talk about it because you are concerned and you want to pray about it. And the best is you would in, even invite that brother or that sister to join you. And then you pray together. Hallelujah. I know that Nana is already organizing something. <laughs> so, yeah, let's meet together. Yes, let's pray together. Ibalik natin yung mga care groups natin na medyo nabuwag for some time. Yes, and then let's share. Doon, doon yung mga isi-share yung mga, you know, your, you can share testimonies because testimonies, testimonies can strengthen faith. Yeah? And also you can share your burdens to them and then pray. Okay? You don't need a pastor to do that. To group yourself and you don't need a pastor na, eh, hindi naman kasi wala naman kaming leader na pastor. No, you can do that yourselves. In fact, we want you, that's what we want to happen, that we train you to, even if there's no pastor, you are doing it on your own. Amen? Oh, by the way, in our midweek prayer meeting, hindi na ako nagsasalita doon. Yes. Kayo, kayo na. You just share a verse or so, and then what did you understand of this verse? And then let's pray that the Lord will speak through that verse, will speak through you. Napakaganda. Napakaganda. I'm really happy that this is going on, this is happening. And so I pray that you join in the next uh, few weeks. Amen? So enhancing... Uh, our fellowship through prayers and worship. Another way is enhancing fellowship through the Lord's Supper. We, um, we just, sometimes we just do Lord's Supper so ritually, you know. Okay, let's take the cup, let's take the blood, and then let's pray a little prayer, and that's it, let's take the, the bread, let's take the, the cup, let's sing a song done. No. In taking or in celebrating the Lord's Supper, there is more to that. In fact, the uh, celebration of the Lord's Supper is an expression of our fellowshipping together. together. Why? We're, well, first of all, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 26, it says that the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So, you see, when we celebrate communion, we are actually celebrating our union with Christ. First of all, in vertical uh, direction, okay? Our fellowship with Christ. We are celebrating that. So, in the, nec the next time we celebrate our communion, I want us to always think of it, contemplate, uh, meditate on it, that when we participate in that communion, we are actually, ac we are actualizing, or we are celebrating, uh, memorializing, <laughs> remembering. We are remembering that we are, in fact, Commun communing with Christ, that we are fellowshipping with Christ. Remember, we are his body. Yes, the church is his body. So he is the head, we are his body. So we are connected with him through what? Through that, to what happened to him. And we are celebrating exactly that in communion. So when we take all these elements, the, the, uh, the cup and the, the bread, let us meditate on the meaning of those things. That means we are, have a fellowship with God. Okay? So, I want us next time when we do, when we celebrate, then we really, you know, make it uh, 
conscious to focus on that, that we have this communion with Christ, that we have fellowship with him while we take that communion, or when we take that communion. The second one is the horizontal fellowship, this is a horizontal communion. It's our communion with each other. Okay? Um, yeah. Why, why, why did we say that? Look, when we participate in that communion, remember that that bread is broken from one bread, okay? Symbolically, it was broken from one bread. That is the whole body of Christ. So we are taking part in that body of Christ. So each one of us is a part of that body. That means that we are just one. So when we take those articles, uh, elements of communion, then let us again focus on that, let's meditate on that truth that we are part of the body of Christ. That we are in communion with each other. So first is our communion with Christ, and then a vertical direction, and then with our communion with others. Fellowship, okay? Fellowshipping with Christ, fellowshipping with others. And when we are doing that, when we are participating in that communion, when we are celebrating communion, we let's put that in our mind always. Let's remind ourselves, yes, we are, we have fellowship with Christ, with God, and then we have fellowship with one another. Amen? It says in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, when we celebrate communion, we are actually proclaiming, we are declaring our own faith. Our, own, our faith in the death and resurrection of Christ. It says here, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. So, I am saying, okay, I'm taking communion. Nakita ko si Sister Grace. Nagtetake din siya ng communion with me. Oh, wow, Sister Grace. So we are one in Christ. We are one in that faith. Do you understand? We, when we celebrate communion, we are telling each other we are one in faith. Amen? So it's fellowship. And let, let that be real. Um, clear to us when we are celebrating communion. Okay? It's not just an, a ritual na ginagawa natin every month. Kundi it's really a fellowship. We fellowship in communion. Okay? And the last one, the third one, is the fellowship through the offerings. We collected a while ago offering, and every Sunday we do that. And many of us just see it just, um, again, it's just a program. It has to be done. You know? But of course, we, we view offering in this manner. For example, we, view, we know practically that this money that we collect will need to go to paying bills, right? Paying, yeah, this house we are renting need to be paid for. Uh, the electricity, water, um, what else? Yeah, our partner ministries, things like that. So we know that it, I mean, this offering that we are collecting goes to pay to something, to pay bills, right? That's, that's okay. I mean, it's correct. It's a mechanical detail of an offering. But some in some way, we can also uh, look at it or view at it as just a, well, this is just between me and God. Kaya nga hindi natin pinapakita yung ating, di ba? <laughs> oh, look, I am giving 10 euro this, week, this Sunday, ha? Oh, yan. Nakabigay ako ng 100, yeah? No, we don't do that. Because we know that this is between you and God. Yes, it's private. Out of the abundance of your heart, out of your, your love for him, you give. Yes? So, yes, that's also right. It is 
we know that when we do that, we have also blessings that coming that come in. Yeah, that is also right. Now, um, it's like, of course, we we know that the Bible is saying that when we give, it will also be given unto you. Yeah, what? Shaken. Ano yon yung favorite na verse natin? When you give, it will be give, and it will be given unto you. Siksik, liglig, at umaapaw pa. We know that verse, right? And so we give. Yes? The same, ito pala, the same measure will be measured back to you. Kung ano yung ginamit mong measure when you give, the same will be given back to you. So if you give, gave a hundred euro, a hundred euro will come back to you, literally, okay? The, I mean, literally, uh, looking at it, it, would, it should be like that, yes? But we know that in reality, sometimes it's more, right? Kaya sabi dito, siksik, liglig, at umaapaw pa. Okay, have you ever experienced that? You gave hundred euro and more is given back to you? Or maybe not literally 100 uh, back to you or 200 back to you, kundi in another terms, in other, another way, like maybe a car was given to you. <laughs> well, when we were in, in uh, serving in the German church, we were, uh, yeah, Barbara, I, I'm sorry to, to uh, use her as, as an example now. She was still new in the faith, and of course, there are, uh, she's not yet very firm in giving the tithes. Okay? But when she started understanding uh, giving tithes and the benefits from it, she is giving. So she gave. And Truly, the word of God come to manifest. People were giving us. <laughs> it's not in money that we receive, but in kinds. Like someone gave us a car. Basta ganun na lang. Someone approached us. Oh no, you, we, are, you, we see you working uh, for the kids and uh, in the church. And we want to bless you. They... Kinuha kami sa isang sulok after the service. Or during the service pa yata. Basta hinila lang kami sa isang sulok. And this couple, they are now in, in Canada. Yeah. They said, we are, we are uh, migrating to Canada and we don't know whom we give the, our car. But the Lord is speaking to us to give it to you. So, <laughs> they just gave us a, what was that? A safari? <laughs> Safira? <laughs> Open. I mean, could you imagine that? And then, to know later that Barbara was actually praying for a car that would fit for four kids. At that time, we, we had only three kids. Okay, but she prayed that when it is his will that we will have four kids, he will provide the car fitting for four <laughs> Can you imagine that? So you see how God can really bless, you know, and, and can answer prayers in specific ways, according to His will, of course. He is good. And then some people would just, you know, <laughs> one, one sister uh, just said, uh, in a few days, you, you, someone will deliver a washing machine. Uh, no, not the washing machine, a um, spool machine. What is that? Uh, dishwasher to you. Brand new. I mean, God is good, isn't it? I, 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 kaya nga, if I have to, to recall all these blessings, wala nang doubt eh, that God is really working. That God, I was praying uh, that time because I, I, I mean, God was reminding me this word, His word, which says, Call unto me and I will answer thee. He said, And I will show you great and mighty things which you have not known yet. So I, so I was asking God, Lord, ano, ano yung mga great and mighty things that you will ask, I will, you will show me when I ask, when I call on you? Ayun na nga. Basta na nag-ganun. 
I, I didn't become rich out of that, but you know, from time to time, yung bang naso surprise ka, naso surprise ka that God is like <laughs> embracing you at that, at that moment. Na bigla ka na lang surprise na look, here is my blessing to you. It's I mean God is true to His promises, and His promises are real or true. Amen? So, I, I wish that all of us would have that, that desire to really, you know, trust in Him in our giving. Okay? Because, yeah, the, the Word of God is, is true. And I have seen a lot of times the blessings of giving. Yeah, but that is personal way, you know, personal giving. But since we are talking about fellowship, what could be the, the and how could giving or of our offering enhance our fellowship? Okay, how could our offering enhance our fellowship? Let us look at the church in Jerusalem because they had a marvelous, a great spirit of giving. In Acts 2, verses 44 and 45, it says, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. I... I don't expect this. I don't expect that we will do this. Okay. <laughs> Sabi dito, they, they sold all their possessions. Imagine, Sister Kathy would sell her car and then just share to all of us who the, the, in, the yung pinag, uh, bilhan niya, bentahan niya. Now, of course, we don't expect that. But the, the church in Jerusalem did this during those times. And in Acts 4, 32 to 35, it says, Now the multitude of those who believed were one of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of, things, of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. So, in their times, these early church, no one had lack. Walang nagkulang. Why? Because everyone has helped everyone. Everyone has helped everyone. Now, this was really um, amazing to see how th their desire to, you know, it's an expression of their love for God when they believed. And so they help each other. They also, or let's look at another church, the church in Antioch, for example, in Acts 11, 27 to 30 says, And these days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout the land, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the apostles, or the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So, the church in Antioch, they heard about the need, uh, they heard about this prophecy by the prophet named Agabus. And when that happened, they collected and sent relief to that church. So, church helping church. Individual helping individual, church helping church. So we, as a fellowship, can really enhance our fellowship by our giving. Again, not by 
the sense of obligation na para bang you are obligated na ito kailangan kong gawin dahil sinabi ni pastor <laughs> kundi out of your love out of your love for God out of your love for brothers and sisters to maintain our fellowship you are giving out of your love for brothers and sisters all around the world you are giving for example we know that we, you know that we have partner uh, ministries in the Philippines we are helping those uh, poor guys there you know so and we can enhance our fellowship through that okay now also the Apostle Paul um, he was good in ano tawag dito? collecting uh, offering and then bring it to other churches that's what he was doing in Galatians 2 9 to 10 it says and when James Cephas and John who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that he had given to me they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to be circumcised they desired only that we should remember the poor the very thing which I also was eager to do so Paul was very much eager to help the poor so what does he do he went to church by church like this and then he would encourage come let us help our brothers and sisters who are poor okay so in first corinthians for example uh, chapter 16 1 to 4 we can see here it says now concerning the collections for the saints as i have given order to the church of galatia you must do also on the first day of the week let each one of you lay something aside storing up as he may prosper that there be, be no collections when i come and when i come whomever you approve by your letters i will send to bear your gift to jerusalem at this time jerusalem church was suffering so uh, Apostle Paul was, was talking to the Corinthian church. Sabi niya, Sige, I'm, he was not there at that time, but he was let, writing this letter to them, telling them, every week you collect something that we can send something to some amount to the church in Jerusalem. Do you see? Fellowship is helping each other. Not out of obligation, but out of our love for our brothers and sisters. And in fact, that's what we are doing too. We are sending yeah, some, some amount. And, and by the way, oh, I, I forgot to tell about this. We have started already our um, school in the Philippines. We have two classes, little ones, uh, age two to four. It's actually a daycare uh, class. You know, it's not a formal school yet. It's just a daycare, they call it. It's now I've heard that... Um, it's now a requirement for children before they go to grade one that they should go through daycare or preschool if they did not go through that they will not be admitted in grade one elementary have you heard of that that's, that's new to me that's new to me so that's what we are doing there we we have established two daycare centers yeah uh, one is that has 34 kids uh, this is among the tribes just yes, among the tiboli tribes 32 kids and the other one is i think 20 something like this and then they are planning to open three or four more sa mountain naman where there is really no daycare centers so while I was talking to my sister yesterday, he, she was uh, sharing to me the, the, the scenario that in these areas, hindi, na, hindi ito naabot ng mga programs of the government. So like the government doesn't, don't, doesn't care to provide education for these children. So I was telling my sister, then let's take advantage of that lack. Yung hindi nagagawa ng government, let's do it. To show our, you know, care for these children. Yeah, so our giving here in our uh, fellowship 
It is our way of fellowshipping with other believers in Christ. So let us not take this as just, you know, eh, give na naman, give na mission, ganon But let's take this in a, in a more uh, biblical sense, which is, again, it's the fellowship. It is our oneness in Christ. Let's uh, give our offering together to support our um, needy brothers and sisters. Amen? So, looking at all these things, we can see that our, yes, our offering can really, you know, meet the needs of our brothers and sisters, that's one. But also, it can also give us blessings, right? As I have already presented to you a while ago. And the Bible is talking about it. That when you give, you will also receive. What you sow, you will reap. Okay? Out of the abundance of your heart, of course. Not by compulsion. Kaya nga, the Apostle Paul was um, uh, encouraging the, the members to prepare what they want to give. Hindi yung, nag, you know, when it's offering time, nag, uh, kung ano na lang yung na, kundi it should be prepared from your heart. Ano kayang, Lord, ano ang bang ibibigay ko this way? And how much? Like that. So that it is not out of compulsion, not out of be, yung feeling of being forced, kundi it was really planned by you out of your love for God. Amen? So our offering does not only serve as a means of supplying needs, it's also a means of strengthening our fellowship. In Philippians 4, 15, 16, it says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once, once, once and again for my necessity. So we can see here that the churches were giving their... Um, offering and it is strengthening first of all the Apostle Paul for example who needs help and strengthening the churches who are receiving this relief this aids in 2nd Corinthians 9 12 15 it says for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the Saints but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God so yun daw mga naka-receive, they, they were thanking, you know, God for it. Okay? But also, um, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ. They glorify God for the obedience of your confession of the gospel of Christ. If I have to interpret this, it's like Paul is saying, your giving is a confession of the gospel, uh, to the gospel of Christ. And these people who are receiving your offerings, they are glorifying God for that obedience of that confession. And it's also said, for your liberal sharing with them and all men and by their and by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. We share our uh, resources. The people who receive they are praising God and they are praying for you, for us. People there in the Philippines, they are really praying for us. Yes, and they are really happy receiving our gifts. In 1 John, First John 3, 16, 18 says, By this we know, we know love. 
because he laid down his life for us Jesus laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need let me read that again whoever sees Oh, whoever has this world's goods, that means whoever has the resources, and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? So, sinasabi niya, you who are, have the resources, and you see the need, and yet you don't provide that need. How does the love of God abide in you? And then he said in 18, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Let's not just love in word. Oh, I love you, sister. I care for you. But also in action. Amen. In action. Truth fellowship can be experienced in our offering in our sharing because this is an evidence of our true love for God first of all and true love for our brothers and sisters so the next time we give our offering let's not just give our offering just like that you know out of obligation I think but let us again like what I was telling you about Lord's Supper when we participate in the Lord's Supper let us be I know uh, conscious about why we are doing it the same thing when we give our offering let us be conscious why we are doing it why are you doing it are you doing it just for you know para lang may naibigay or you are doing it because you love God and you love your brothers and sisters I hope that and, and pray that we are more conscious in what we are doing let us focus to the right thing amen looking unto jesus i've been the apostle paul looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith so when i do when i take the communion i look unto jesus when i pray with my brothers and sisters, i look unto jesus when i praise the lord i don't i don't just make a you know a show but i look unto jesus and then offer him our prayer when i offer my offering i look unto jesus and say lord this is my offering i love you okay let us be conscious in all these things in these activities that we are doing these acts of worship is they are actually acts of worship anything that we do to god is an act of worship and this all these were designed this what we are doing are designed to enhance our fellowship that's why we have to we ought to do these things consciously talagang clear yung mind natin pag ginagawa natin ito alam natin yung purpose why why we are doing it tama yung motive ng ating heart when we are doing it hindi yung pagalingan or you know you know what i mean or selfish ambition no it should all be for the glory of god amen so we can really enjoy fellowship with each other with these activities that we that i have mentioned worshiping god praising god and praying for each other that can enhance our fellowship the participation in the lord's supper and also participation in our offering amen so it is our prayer my prayer that we really seek seek our heart look at our hearts and you know refocus our hearts refocus our intentions unto God and let us participate in all these activities that will enhance our fellowship with each other okay do we want our fellowship to get stronger then let's participate in this in the right perspective in the right motive with the right attitude with the right focus amen amen
in Hebrews 10:24, and I would like to end with this. It says, "Let us consider one another in order to stir up love." Okay, what does that mean? Consider one another to stir up love. Hindi yung or what does it mean? It means that we, when we um, mingle with each other, or when we fellowship with one another, let us stir in the heart of others to, to have, you know, that love will abound between you and me, for example, between you and your sister. That love is always there. That love will be felt when you fellowship. To stir up love and good works, okay? Not only love, but that it will produce good works. And then, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, it's a, it's a very famous uh, line, we should not neglect our meeting together or the assembling together, the gathering together with brothers and sisters, because we know that we have benefit for it as is the manner of some, but let us exhort one another, eto na, and so much more as you see the day approaches. Let us exhort one another. So really, I, I, my prayer is that, when, uh, that our relationship with each other does not stay in the conversational na puro light conversations lang. You know what I'm saying? Yung mababaw lang ng mga conversation. Kundi it should go deeper. Our conversation with each other should become more, uh, much deeper. Biblically uh, founded. Yung ating mga pag-uusap sa isa isa. You know what I'm saying? So, when you meet each other, and when you, say, of course, there's this, hello, kumusta mga sis, mga ganyan-ganyan, you know, yung, uh, oh, kumustahan, and things like that. But it should not stay there. It should go deeper into, much. how are you? What, what's your need? What can I pray for you? Is there something that I can do for you? Kung nakita mo na medyo, Nagihirap uh, emotionally yung sis, then encourage. Take, uh, ask God, ano bang verse ang pwede kong i-share dito sa sister na ito to encourage her. You know? So, that we grow together in that level of fellowship. Na yung ating fellowship sa isa't isa will not stay shallow over fleshly lang, no? Kundi it should grow deeper, a deeper um, root sa, sa isang tree, di ba, is more stable than those uh, trees na hindi siya overfleshlish lang. One blow ng wind and that tree will already fall down. But if that tree is deeply rooted, it will stay, it will stand. In the same manner that if our relationship with it, our fellowship is deeply rooted in the Word, our activities, for example, our transaction with each other, our uh, fellowshiping with, uh, fellowship with each other is deeper based on the Word of God, then it will stand strong. Amen? This is my, my prayer, and I... I hope that we really um, keep this in our heart, this Word of God, and let it grow, let it, uh, of course, first root in our heart, and then let it grow and may bear fruit among us. Amen? So let us all stand up, and let us um, end our service in prayer first. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, O oh God. We praise you. We magnify your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, my brothers and sisters, O oh God, who are here, I pray, O oh God, that you just give each one of us the desire to grow more in your word, to grow more in our fellowship with one another, to grow more in the knowledge of you, in our faith, and even in our actions, in our uh, works, O oh God, that we become deeper in our relationships and in our uh, fellowship, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is our prayer, O oh God, so that you will be glorified in our midst, so that your name will be glorified in our midst. 
Oh, that people around us will see that we are indeed your disciples because we have love for one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the lives of these brothers and sisters. Bless them, O oh God. Bless them. Whatever need there is at the moment, O oh Lord, may that be physical need, material need, spiritual need, emotional need. O oh God, I pray that you meet that need right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone who is sick, O oh Lord. I pray for healing even right now. Oh, by your stripes. That brother, that sister is now healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing. Oh, bless our brothers and sisters in Koblenz, in Hanover, O oh Lord. Just keep them, Lord. Bless them so that we may have fellowship even when we are far apart from each other. O oh Lord, we have fellowship in our spirit, O oh God. And also in our, um, uh, in our uh, relationship with each other, O oh God, that you just preserve each one, that you bind us with your love, that your love will grow in our hearts, that this love will overflow and it will be a spreading um, to others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We glorify you, O God. Thank you for your word today. Oh, we magnify you. We magnify you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, yes, let's close our service. Where are the kids? Okay, they are coming. <clears throat> in my house. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Jesus in me. I'm so glad that Jesus lives in my house. Good to know that He is here with me now. All of my life, Jesus in me, Jesus in my house. All of my life and always will be. Thank you, Lord, for the purpose. Thank you for your purpose you have placed in me. Thank you for forgiveness and the chance to start again. I wish the future knowing I will be safe and sound with Jesus in me. I'm so glad that Jesus lives in my house. Good to know that Jesus is here with me now. All of my life, Jesus in me, Jesus in my house. All of my life and always will be. I'm so glad that Jesus lives in my house. Good to know that He is here with me now. All of my life, Jesus in me, Jesus in my house. All of my life and always will be. All of my life, Jesus in me, Jesus in my house. All of my life and always will be. Thank you, Lord. God. May the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for having joined us today. God bless you all and see you again next week. Bye-bye. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>